Hello and welcome back to the Schooner Pod. Uh, I'm your host, Bobby Howard. With me, we've got James and Maxwell, Ty Lee, and guys, it's our annual spring game episode. And uh, look, there's a lot to talk about. The, the players we're most excited to see. The recruits we're most anxious to impress. But I, I we gotta we gotta start about this this year's edition. We're talking about something near and dear to my heart: the the weather. And look, folks, it, I know y'all give me y'all y'all give me guff for talking about the weather too much. How how it affects stuff. This actually could change the, like the day of the game, the time of the game. So for once in a, in a while, this actually has a, a pretty big bearing on things. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, guys, I, I I don't know both of y'all out, uh, out of state for the first time in a good while for this one. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Before we get into the weather, is y'all got plans to watch the spring game or you like, like go I to work on replay? <laughs> oh. I work, and I'm not happy about it. But it, it will be watched. I just um. I don't know how much my attention will be on it the first time. Ty, yeah, I'll be I'll be tuning in for sure on a Saturday if it happens on Saturday. I, we plus, do need right? a, we do need to have a quick programming note about Bobby's revisionist history. So Bobby's weather takes started when we were reviewing a Minnesota versus Wisconsin game, and Bobby <laughs> opined that the Minnesota players perhaps. Would not be used to playing in the weather at Wisconsin. Um, so it was, it was you have it backwards. You have it backwards. Uh, okay, okay, but yes, I, I'm surprised. It's still I bad. Remembered, I'm surprised I remember the schools um, involved because it was years ago at this point. But it's not. Bobby is not criticized for addressing the weather too often. Yeah, that's, and that's and to be completely frank, you know, we might talk about this for a couple minutes and then like people are going to start listening. There's already like word like we're on, we're not changing things, but you know, we've already had it in the past where they switched it and they flexed it you know, to a Friday. Obviously the weather is a little bit different in terms of just being like in the fifties and ch- like chance of rain um, coming on Saturday. Yeah. That, that makes sense why they would want to move it logistically, but there are so many other factors here to where I just don't think that they can move it really, unless it's really, really bad weather to the point where they couldn't feasibly play because there's some big time recruits, big time portal guys coming in that probably wouldn't be able to get in in time for if it was a Friday night kick. And then a lot of people, you know, have to change your plans on a whim. Now we're recording this Wednesday, you know, try to make something go for Friday night and we still haven't heard of a plan or a decision. I I, I just, I feel like we're just going to have to be, I've, we've seen it a lot in the past, you know, bad weather spring games. I think it's just going to be one of those tough luck. Yeah, yeah, and I I feel like having it at one, like, it, it's tricky because it's it's like an inclement you know, thunderstorms like Oklahoma, real classic late you know, you know, late April early May, like the spring garbage where you know you have tornadoes that sort of stuff. That's what they're concerned about more than you know in the past eleven a.m. kickoffs where it's thirty degrees. Yeah. Um, so but isn't it isn't it only like the it. chance of rain and it's like in the morning maybe isn't it supposed to like clear up later so there I guess is there a chance that maybe they could push it to Saturday I don't know I looked a little bit earlier whenever I saw some people tweeting about it yeah it, it, that's true yeah it says like showers in the morning uh, evolving into a more steady rain in the afternoon sort of thing uh, is what I'm looking at on weather.com um and then at the night it'll be overcast with occasional showers so like you could do like a late night game which i think is is way more doable um and i think it makes way more sense than a friday night game so mm-hmm. hopefully that's what they do and i think they and i think part of it is like especially if you have thunderstorms like it's gonna get pushed back anyways so you just kind of have to make it yeah I, I think that makes more sense uh the spring game as much as we love you know, watching it and it's fun for the fa- for the players and you know the fans and all this. It's a recruiting weekend, and you got like the biggest thing. You know, I, I don't think the the recruits are sitting there watching the game, breaking down the X's and O's, and looking at how these you know the, these guys look. It, it's about the whole experience. So, um, you know, if you if you get them in in the experience and don't have the game itself, that you, you lose a little bit, but you don't lose everything. Hmm. So hopefully, I, I I'm hoping for late Saturday sort of day, yeah. sort of deal, with yeah, not totally like Friday. That. I didn't 
I, I wasn't on last week, so I wasn't able to mention the Friday, uh, the actual game getting moved to Friday uh, to kick off the season. But, you know, the whole idea of, you know, having to go down there, you know, after working and stuff, I'm not a super big fan of that. It's a little different when we were in school. Um, but, um, no, yeah, I'm hoping for a late Saturday kick for sure. But, um, yeah, plenty to be excited about. Um OU's first year in the SEC. And some soggy hot dogs, Bobby. It make them a lot easier to go down in the Schwab's hot dog eating competition if you have a little bit of rain going on. Let the record know that if it is raining, that everyone's hot dogs will be higher and last year's numbers will be deflated. You, you really got to do that thing in a bubble. You know, you, you have to you have to have controlled conditions, Jameson. I'm I'm with you there. Yes. I am not. I did not enter. By the way, uh, I, I hate hate to. What am I going to do? I, it was it was different when We're you did it last year because we. Well, you had a lot of people around you. I I'd just be like by myself eating hot dogs while <laughs> yes. while my wife. You actually. And discussed. You don't need to enter. Didn't the guy who the guy who won last year remember? He just walked up in the last. The guy moment? who the guy who won actually did sign up, but he was significantly late, like very mm. very late. Um. So. I mean, if we were a little bit stricter, that should have been DQ. I don't, I'm not going <laughs> to. Yeah, too fair much enough. Now, <laughs> yeah, but um, no, like lots to be excited about. You know, always, always a good time. Always fun to be back in Norman, back in the stadium. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that for sure. Um, you know, nothing too fancy this time. You know, once again, no um, kind of decent uh, pregame show or half to, whatever, whatever Lee Bryce. Honk and tonk, badonk and donk. No honk and tonk, badonk and donk, Jameson, uh, this time. But there will be a semi interesting football game between the red and white. Uh, they're doing the offense defense again, uh, with that kind of weird Elam ending type of style, uh, for the fourth quarter where you have is it a, the same like scoring, a, Bobby? I believe so. I believe if I recall it, last year, I don't know if you guys realize this, but. I was watching the scoreboard operator randomly put points for no reason <laughs> to, to certain teams to keep it closer. <laughs> Cause like, you know, there's these words like you get like a PBU, it'd be like a certain amount of points. Like I saw the scoreboard operator obviously colluding up there. So I, I hope that it's not that again, because I'm going to get frustrated. The, this tiny little things, the semantics sometimes bug me. Well, I mean, yeah, all the rules are made up and, you know, they're just, they're just out there for fun. But um, look, let's talk about um, some key players we're excited about. And I think you got to start off with the top. Uh, let's just go ahead and say it. Jackson Arnold. Uh, you know, last time we saw him, shaky debut in the Alamo Bowl with the, all the interceptions. Um, different situation, obviously, now that he has had some time to, you know, adapt to the new scheme and everything. Um you know, really get in depth with the with the offense with the departure of Jeff Levy. I I think it's going to be interesting to see. Ty, I know you've you've been a proponent of Arnold last year. Are you excited to see him uh, take the field again? I am. Yeah, and, and like we've talked about, you know, the bowl game was the bowl game, but I, I think there's a lot that can be taken from it in terms of his performance, and hopefully, we turn it into something where. It's just kind of good to get some of that out of the system right at the start and know that things can only go up. So I'm pretty excited. I think the spring game is, I mean, it's a terrible way to look at metrics for anyone really, but quarterbacks, you know, it's never really super, super accurate because I think of all the players, you know, they're, they're probably playing the least realistically in that situation. So hopefully we just see some, some beautiful throws and maybe if you're reading into it a little bit more, some, some deeper reads or, or some stuff that he maybe improvises when the time comes here and there in the spring game. But I think looking at quarterbacks, there's, there's not a whole lot. I think that we can learn from Arnold other than, I mean, I don't know. I've, I've gone long on this segment, but I almost feel now that pregame you could maybe see more from Arnold that matters than you can afterwards we're on the sidelines like what is his buy-in from the team how are people reacting to him in the huddle what's he looking like on the sideline you know is he walking around like talking to people does he look like he has the team and has buy-in from the team that's what i would look for way more than any sort of on the field performance air quotes there for on the field because this is a spring game here here's the thing 
If I was a journalist writer and I was writing like top five stories um, to look for going in to the spring game, I feel like a lot of people would be like, quick, oh yeah, Jackson Arnold, the bounce back of Jackson Arnold after the tough bowl. I'm not, no, uh uh. QB1 in terms of spring game, you're not going to get much from it. We've seen this from all the times, but the real thing, what you get from the spring game in terms of quarterbacks, is quarterback two. And we've seen that many years past. Remember Caleb Williams' spring game? My God, we couldn't stop talking about it. And then Jackson Arnold's too, a little bit too. And mobile quarterbacks, the guys that are like like pretty like squirmy in the backfield and can get out and um, they can't touch you and they're pulling up and this guy's going to take one cut and he can go. Like the guy everyone's going to be talking about, I think, should probably be Malik Hawkins. We've heard rave reviews in terms of all of the things from – like the message board saying like he's been doing great in practice. He's got a lot of athleticism. He's got a lot to his game and he's going to get a lot of run um, in the spring game. Cause you know, Jackson Arnold solidified as a QB one. So a guy that everyone is going to get decided about as his tradition is going to be QB two. That's mobile. And that's right there for Hawkins. Mm. Right. And Casey Thompson being out yes. like means that you got, you know, Hawkins running with the twos the whole way. And I, I I'm with you. I think that's going to be really exciting. Um, because, I mean, like like we mentioned, it's not always, you know, a surefire. Like, if you have a bad spring game, it's not the end of the world. Kyler had a bad one. Baker had a bad one, um, like, his first spring game. So, it's it's really whatever. But Hawkins, that's going to be fun. That that guy is ready to show out and show out in a big way. And I'm, I'm excited to see him, you know, run around with that blue shirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, like in the grand scheme of things, how much am I going to get really excited about the quarterbacks? I think I need to temper my expectations about that. Really, it, the spring game is meant for the skill guys. Um, wide receiver is the biggest one we talk about every single year. Running back, you'll have some good plays from them. They'll be physical. But in terms of like being 100% game speed and physicality, it's still not quite there with the spring game. Wide receivers, like – you're still going to go out, play press coverage against the cornerback and try to get out and, you know, get touchdowns. They, they don't really change too much. The big, big thing I'm looking at here is probably like guys like Jaquay's Petaway is probably what I'm looking at the most. I know there's a lot of people in, in this OU world that have been talking to message boards on Twitter and like, oh, the, the portal's open. Who's guys that can go in that I'd be really worried about? Could it be a Jaquay's Petaway because he's kind of still stuffed down on the, on the depth chart and he's got so much talent. Guys like that, you know, that have a lot of talent, that we've seen things that we like, I want them to go out there and perform and have a big-time spring game to keep their morale higher and make them know that they will have a part in the offense come fall time. Yeah, Petaway is is a guy I have circled as well. Um, He's a guy we saw, like, little flashes of from time to time, but nothing too stand out last year it was a pretty packed uh, receiver room at times um would love to see more out of him for sure Mm -hmm. yeah and everyone's gonna want to see Deion burks too you know just the new guys and i don't want to i don't want to just take away and just try to be a contrarian it's obviously going to be fun to see everyone who's new on this campus because it's the first time we're seeing them you know get pads on and put an OU football jersey on. Deion Burks is just going to be far and away our best wide receiver. He's going to be a lot of fun to watch. But there's something about me internally when it comes down to this spring game, and it's kind of like whenever you're sitting in game one of OU and we're playing XYZ UTEP. You know, you don't go to that UTEP game to get excited to watch that first quarter and our like big first like level of guys like, quarterback Jackson Arnold and we're looking at Javante Barnes and Gavin Sachuk. No, you're really more excited me as a football junkie of like, what's going to be like in the third and fourth quarter, whenever we can get the backups in who can shine then. And that's kind of how I view this spring game. So I'm really not looking as much at the first round of guys. I'm kind of looking at the second and third lines. Yeah. Yeah. And I, th- I think that's fair. And like last year, that was the highlight was Jackson Arnold, you know, of course. kind of leading, leading at the end and, you know, get a little bit of flash there. And, you know, I I feel like this guy isn't quite he, he straddles the line between being a one and a two, but I, I'm excited to see Jaden Gibson out there. He he's apparently made like some pretty big strides. You know, it's we're in talking season right now, so you're just talking about stuff. But I'm excited to see him for sure. 
And no Jalil Farouk tie, your favorite player. Yes, Looks this like is he's, good. Got a, he's got a cast on his foot. Who knows what that is? Yes. Like how long he's going to be out. That's the best sign for this upcoming season. Uh, if if only we could – I don't want him to get hurt, but if, if only uh, Gavin Freeman would uh, not get injured but maybe transfer to Texas Tech be playing either, where he belongs. Yeah. I know. I agree. He shouldn't be playing for OU, <laughs> period. Um, 100% agree. But – no, I I mean, we'll save the bits for Farouk, I guess, when he's coming back to throw more pick sixes as a receiver. But, um, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm blaming that Levy, Levy, though. You got to blame Levy for that. I I would like what? to find a scapegoat, too, Yes, Bobby. I do. Um, you know what? You're, you're right. You're right. I blame Levy because Levy put him on the depth chart. So, just doing um, weird. But he, no, he still, no, he, he did still not. Culture, he instilled a culture of doing weird stuff with Jalil Farouk. Dude, Farouk was a Lincoln Riley recruit. He was. He came over with uh, Caleb Williams. They were buddies. Mm -hmm. DMV. It yeah. all makes sense now. Yes. <laughs> yes. A place that's that part of the hot dog day. <laughs> yeah. In an area where they don't know football. Once again, it's a, how many times are we going to have to learn this lesson about recruiting in areas where they don't know football? It's absurd. But yeah, so I'm, I'm, of course, what was that, Bob? They they put waters in the Potomac, or they put they put like chemicals in the Potomac to make you know, not know ball. You know, so. I've I've really wanted to jump in the Potomac, but let's not go down this rabbit hole right They're now. They're putting water in the rivers. <laughs> uh, anyways, they put water in the river. That's anyways. not that's not ideal. That's not ideal. Um, yeah. I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, Nick Anderson. I have to bring him up for receivers. Our actual WR one. Obviously, I am excited to see that. Uh, he will be the truth next year. So everyone has been warned. I was the first on this podcast to tell everyone about C.D. Lamb. They said, no, no, no. He's uh, not going to do anything. WR4. I discovered C.D. Lamb. Um, and I have now discovered Nick Anderson before anyone else. Yeah. Okay. I, I like how your deep I like how your deep cut wide receiver had like a billion touchdowns last year. <laughs> Including, including the game. I know, winner no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. I was misrepresenting that. Did I not in the preseason last year say Nick Anderson? Nick Anderson, maybe. And you guys are, oh, you're saying that because you know his brother, Nick Anderson. I was saying Nick Anderson too. I think a lot of us were. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's after I said, after I, after I put you guys on to it though. All right, sure. Whatever. Revisionist history at this That's point. That's not revisionist history. I'll pull the tapes. I've been okay. wrong. I've been, I've been wrong. I've been wrong on I've been one. Wrong. I've, been wrong. I've been wrong on one take ever on this entire podcast. Not when it comes to picking games, but picking players. And that was the curse that has now been lifted of Marcus Major. I swear he was here for like seven years. And I was tied to that bit. I'm now free of that, and uh, nothing can go wrong. Oh, yeah. God. Wait. No, no, no. Hold, hold on. Think about it. He was on Charleston Rambo. Rambo leaves. Then goes on to Major. Major leaves. He's going to curse somebody else. No, no. I feel. I think I kind of called the Rambo thing of like – I called that. that. He was the origin, I think, of the WR2 thing a little bit. I mm -hmm. kind of had the, the, the proto thought with CD uh, back when he was like WR2. But then Rambo came – and that's when I had that whole, he's going to blow up and then people are going to start guarding him and then he's going to have to transfer to Miami. That's what I said. And then look what happens. But he never was the WR1. Like, even when, I, I don't know. I don't know. It was, it was yeah. Yeah, let, let, let's move on. Um, I think one guy that Bobby is going to be really <laughs> pissed if we don't talk about in terms of offensive guys that everyone wants to see and is really excited about is a certain tight end that I don't think Bobby – on Mitchell, uh, you cut out a little bit there. You talk about. Uh, I, I was talking about Devon Mitchell, and you yeah. can just fill in oh. the blanks on that one because Bobby has been just getting crazy and hot and sweaty every single time he talks about oh, him. Boy. Oh boy, man, I, I'm I'm excited about him. I know he's not going to be a year one guy, like in terms of getting. But a he's ton a of spring production. game guy, right? He's a perfect spring game guy. He is the perfect spring game guy because he, he you know, looks great in pads. You know, look, you know, if you're not going 100 percent, you know, he has the physicality to kind of look really good in that situation where it's live ball, but not live, live ball. You know, you're kind of a bad teammate if you try to kill your own teammate, you know, on, on in a spring game. Uh, so Mitchell, you know, could go out there, do his thing. He already looks physically like 
you know, a, an adult, like he belongs in college, even though he, he, he's technically a, should be a year behind. But yeah, no, I, I will say I, I I'll make a promise to you right now, Jameson, that no matter how good he looks in the in the spring game, I will not be propagating takes that he needs to be like tight end one. He's gonna like, get a touchdown. He's gonna get a touchdown oh, yeah. Saturday. Just lock it in. It's it's gonna happen, and Bobby's gonna be like, oh, he's not gonna say anything. <laughs> I'm trying to look. I'm tr- I'm trying to be better because I know exactly that is going to happen, and I know like previous me's might be like yeah he's gonna he's gonna you know he's gonna win the mackie award year one can you, um, can you tie that meme no. that you always send it's like lord forgive me but i'm got to go back to the old me <laughs> bugs funny with the with the gun <laughs> yeah that's that's really it yeah i no. a big thing yeah sorry sorry to yeah i i think that's going to be a lot of fun and we're not going to see jake roberts he, he's been out in terms of the tied in room bower sharp I, that's my guy. If you if you want to be a Devon Mitchell guy, I'm going to be a Bauer Sharp guy. That that guy's going to be great. I don't know how much we'll see in terms of like peak performance in the spring game, but man, that guy's going to be something special. I I'm buying a lot of his stock right now. Um, but I, I think a big question to ask, I, Bobby, Bobby, how how much have you been paying attention to the offensive line kind of you know corral that's going on right now and um, buying into the stock of who's going to start where? Uh, I will say what I have been buying into is that our best options at the offensive line are in the transfer portal right now. I'm pretty sure. Uh, mm-hmm. and I don't mean that guys who have left, I mean, guys out there who we need to attain. Um, I feel like we talked recently about how you don't just kind of get good alignment in the portal. Well, here they are. They, mm-hmm. I feel like there's some decent ones out there fresh for the picking. That you know, Beat and Bo could go go stroll down the transfer portal market, maybe get somebody. But um, man, right now it's it's clearly a position of extreme weakness, um, especially on the interior line. It's it's concerning. I, I feel like you can you can name names, take your picks, but ultimately it's there. The guys on the roster just aren't good enough right now, um, and that's just that's just kind of the way it is, uh, frankly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, the center is a big thing, and um, I forget when twenty all brought this up, but the game isn't as much about the recruits or the transfer portal guys coming in and seeing things. I think when Branson Hickman from SMU center, a guy that um, cra- shout out to my buddy Evan was talking about, like really good PFF grades. He's got a smart, you know, he's pretty smart. Um, seems like he'll be a solid kind of plug in center if we can get him out of the portal and I, I think if we put in a good nil package for him we could get him if he goes out there and he sees josh bates snap a couple of balls in the dirt like he's been doing a practice in rainy environment too this isn't going to make it any better for snapping he's going to be like all right y'all need me okay and that's yeah. going to push ou's hand the bag men are going to even come out even more I'm like i can't watch this anymore we got to give a dude some money and Branson Hickman is like you talk about we'll talk about defensive line guys that will be coming in for the from the portal targets um, for this weekend. But my goodness, like Branson Hickman is important because Troy Everett being out, Troy Everett wasn't good, not good to begin with. He was all right. But man, we got nothing else at center. Yeah, the cupboard is pretty bare right now. And, you know, part of that is just like where where the line is at in terms of cycles. Um, it didn't really have an heir apparent center there, you know, uh, in previous years, you could kind of tell who's going to slot in and move up there, but this year it just wasn't the case. And yeah, it, it, it's gotta be done through the portal. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People talk about like Eugene Brooks as a guy, like maybe could he move over to center? That dude's just so talented and so good right now. Yeah. Could we move him over to center? But this guy's like a future guard. He could be a guy who could start at guard next year for us. Like when we woo like leaves and we'd have like Ozeda and him because he's that good. How much do I really want to just like throw him at center just because we're desperate? I'd rather get someone who's been there and done that, and we can get more of a veteran center moving into the SEC. We don't talk enough, and I try to talk about it enough, how important the offensive line – I'm not trying to pat my own back. Ty's laughing at me. But like <laughs> how important the offensive line is, for especially for a new quarterback in terms of just a general quarterback success – we talk about, you know, the intangibles, the quarterback, their skill sets, all of that. But 
if you have protection in college and a decent coaching staff for good plays, people will get open and you'll make the plays. But you look at Drake May last year. Drake May's offensive line was pitiful. That dude's got a lot of skill. I don't want to hear Ty's thoughts on Drake May. Um, but Drake May is a very, very skilled quarterback. Looked pitiful last year because he had no good offensive line. Sam Bradford, 2008, looked amazing because his offensive line was amazing. You know, next year, a lot of people leave. Or I not, no, 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 no. Uh, the year before that. What am I mixing up, Bobby? What, what year no, was you when you got hurt? In 09, a lot of people left, but Trent Williams was still there. And yeah. it was like, mm. it, it, it was like Trent Williams and a bunch of like really, really green O linemen. Yeah, it was, and so like he got hurt. That was 2009 was BYU, right? Correct. You are correct. That's so, correct. So yeah. Yes. Okay. So exactly. So that's what I'm trying Game to, one. I'm trying to get out here. So it's it, an offensive line is so, so important for a guy in Jackson Arnold, who is essentially this is his first time starting as Oklahoma's quarterback, throw out the bowl game into SEC play. It is so important to have a good offensive line and a center is always going to be that key cog part of it. I think having a veteran who's been there and played games, even if it was at SMU is so important to get Branson. Yeah. Hey, SMU, you know, uh, ACC program out there. <laughs> not, not, not while he was there, but um, they're, they're there. That, they're there now. So um, I don't know. And Hey, you know, Zoan field, he was out there for that. Uh, I'm guessing he was, he played for that, uh, you know, Rhett Lashley when they played uh, Norman last year. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but that that's the big thing. Offensive line, I'll be curious to see who's going to start there. Um, the big thing I saw, like some reports, like Jacob Sexton playing a guard at, during practice, and they're just moving them all around. And really, the big picture of it, um, I I wouldn't be surprised to see a combination of things. But I would expect to see Sexton out at left tackle, Wee Woo at left guard, Bates at center, um, and then Ozeda right guard, and then. Um, the right tackle, I could see Jake Taylor going out there and beating Spencer Brown. Um, another one of those things of keeping the young guy happy. He's done, been there for three years, and he's doing the work. Um, so th- that's that's kind of my thought. But th- we've got a lot of work, and especially at the offensive tackle position. And, you know, that right tackle doesn't look like a slam dunk in terms of the Spencer Brown transfer. So we'll, we'll hopefully um, we we'll get some more news as people start to enter the portal more and more in the month of April. Yeah, it's, let's talk about defense. I mean, it, it, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, it just opened up. It's it's gonna be a process, but yeah, mm-hmm. let's let's move on to the defense. The white, I believe that they'll be the uh, representing the white side of the uh, red white game. Um, I before we dive into specific positions, Jameson, I just want to say I think the white team is gonna kind of clobber the red team. Oh yeah, here. yeah, it, just it, wait for it. The, that defensive line is gonna power through them. <laughs> it's gonna be ugly. Um, but yeah, Jameson, you go ahead. Uh, what what uh, position group we started with here? Yeah, let's talk. Let's. I think we should hit on the interior of the defensive line because it's going to be a good transition of portal guys that it's like we really want to talk about that will be coming through. And so, if you look at the interior of the defensive line, you know John Terry's there. That's that's done. But really, who's going to be the defensive tackle next to him is going to be a huge, huge story going into the season. You know, people have high hopes for Grayson Halton. He shows these flashes, but is he actually going to be that kind of guy that it's always a potential in him? We talk about him. Every, I feel like the past couple of off seasons. Oh, Grayson Halton can do something. Doesn't do it. Simple as that, you know? So like Grayson Halton, Champ Sanders, um, I'm looking at you. People are going to get more excited about Jaden Jackson, David Stone. I think they're going to be good. They're going to have, you know, hiccups during their young career. Um, they're going to play no matter what. Guys that I'm really excited for is could Ashton Sanders or Grayson Hall, one of those guys, go out there and look dominant and be like, okay, I feel a little bit better and what the potential we could in terms of our two deep defensive interior defensive line is. Yeah, the, I mean, that that I think to me is the key question is what what shakes out with the interior line and you know I I think again like we kind of talked about with the O-line, um, I think the answer is probably in the portal. I think you got to get a big portal name in there to sort of replace out J- or to re- replace the depth you lost with Jacob Lacey's uh, medical retirement. Um, and I don't, I don't know if there's a full answer on the, on the roster right now. I think you definitely need to shore it up. Um, but in terms of guys I'm looking for, I, I am once again, uh, you, you're talking about, oh, yeah, people are probably going to look at David Stone and Jaden Jackson. 
I am those people. I, I am the spring game dummy who has been hearing about these freshmen, these, these recruits for ever. I want to see them go. And I will say it'll be hard to really judge them properly because this O-line is not very good. Um, at least we know for a fact that's the case. That's um, good. Overhype them. If, if they look yeah. good versus offensive line, we'll buy all into the stock of the defensive line and we won't talk as much about the offense. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I'm I, I'm all for that. I think it'd be pretty cool to see them have a have a big uh, big showing. So that's kind of my thoughts right now on the D line, because um, I don't. And, and and again, if someone really shows out on the interior line, you know, I don't think they're necessarily the answer. You know, like just because of how poor the the O line is in a way, don't really know. So that's my thoughts on that. We're we're always going to try to find the positive as a fan base in terms of the spring game. So if whoever if if it's just the worst case is just mediocrity, no one looks good. So if if one side looks good and the other one's bad, screw it. Let's just talk about the positives in terms of guys coming in for the interior defensive line. Uh, man, this is going to be a big big weekend. And obviously, the big talk from today on Wednesday, everyone's talking about Dominic Will- Williams from TCU entering the portal, and then within like an hour or so you hear that he's already coming to this weekend's spring game at Oklahoma. And you're like, all right, I get it. Like, come on. Everyone knows what's going on here. This dude didn't make travel plans and say he's going to go to somewhere within an hour. Come on. Come on. We know what's going on here. I Oklahoma, obviously, is right now they're working for interior defensive line because everyone in the country is. It's so hard to get these kind of guys into the boat. But this is the type of guy you want. I'm, I'm going to read exactly what Blake said. We asked him um, just kind of a quick synopsis. He said, had a more productive freshman than sophomore year. Let, let it be known. This guy was like a freshman All-American, I believe, or freshman All-Big 12. Um, yeah. In sophomore, his sophomore year, um, he didn't do as well, but he easily was a top five, if not top three player on the TCU team. And they said they, he's been looking good in the spring practice reports. Um, wasn't as productive last year. Um, because the D line was cheeks and he was doubled almost every play. There you go. That's the kind well, of guy. TCU as a whole was cheeks last year. <laughs> kind of almost forgot about TCU. It yeah. took me a little while to remember what they did last year. But I mean, like this is this is a big <laughs> deal. It's this it's this it's this type it's the type of guy that you want, and this is the type of thing where it's like he's coming in this weekend, and it was a quick turnaround. So you already know that there's been talks for a little while. Don't let him leave without without committing. Make him right. an offer that he can't refuse. We already have two other guys coming in for defensive line that we already kind of planned on. You know, um, Jermaine Lowell, um, Louisville defensive tackle, stellar guy as well. He'd be a really, really good pickup. Hell, try to get both. Philip Lighty, a guy that we talked about a couple weeks ago, and it seems like we pushed out his visit to be a little bit later. We, those are three stellar guys. Um, I, th- I think... Uh, if you take two of those, you'd be over the moon. But the one guy I don't want leaving without a commitment is Dominic Williams. I mean, I'm with you. I would love to get him. Not just because I love his trajectory, you know, starting out so so well, you know, as a freshman. Obvious, everyone had a bad year at TC last year. That's not just a him thing. Uh, but, like, the potential there is great. The experience at such a young age, it's like that perfect right, you know, hidden right, that right middle ground of experience and skill is excellent um, and age. Um, so that would I think that's very appealing. And uh, also, it would be absolutely hilarious to see Boat and Blake melt down over um, one of their best defensive players going to you. So I, I don't know about you, you Ty. I, I think anytime you get a little bit of Blake schadenfreude, it, makes any situation a little bit better it'll be great for the it'll be great for the content on the pot that would just be tremendous every every weekend when we're breaking down or or uh, wednesdays i guess when we're picking the the uh that week's games that'll be tremendous tremendous so yeah hopefully hopefully we get some good you know not just him but some good portal prospects like you guys were talking about you know fill out the lines fill out uh, some of the other stuff because especially on on the lineman side you know i think jameson you said it earlier on, but you don't really, at least the traditional thinking has been, you don't really recruit lines. You, you have to grow them yourself. Uh, but you know, the landscape is changing and, and, uh, we do have 
good coaching staff on both sides of the ball in terms of reputation for developing linemen. So um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, this this new move into maybe recruiting a little bit more 50, 50-ish percent of, of your starting lines coming in off the portal uh, is certainly uh, uncharted territory, at least for us. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what we do with it. And then again, hopefully get our, our first picks in those. Yeah, at this point in the spring, in terms of targeting guys in the transfer portal and giving your pitch to them, this is what I talked to Williams about. You're you're in a little bit later, so you're going to want to find in like a shoe-in place where you have a very kind of an easier road in terms of a starting job. And my God, for this interior defensive line, we have holes. You can come in, you can be that guy, even if you're coming in the middle of April. You know, so... You don't get that that often at big time schools like Oklahoma and ones that are going to be in the SEC. You know, if you're looking for big time national TV coverage, um, playing the best of the best, you know, you can talk to other schools that are like the Georgias, the Alabamas, you know, the Ole Misses. Those guys, they've already they've already targeted their guys in the portal in the past, like and already solidified that as well as they've kind of recruited and they don't have too many holes. Oklahoma this year is in a unique position. We've got some significant holes and we need to fill them in the portal. And I feel like there should be some guys out there that say, Hey, I've got a pretty good place where I am right now, but if I want to step my game up and get a nice pretty check from some NIL on the side of this, I'll listen to your collusion. Well, and it's also like a really good situation if you're a, you know, interior, if you're a D lineman, because the defense is really solid. We haven't had a chance to talk about the linebackers, you know, and, and the secondary and everything, but that's pretty well shored up. So you're entering a position of weak or a position of weakness that is on a relatively good unit. So you don't have to, you know, it's not like, it's not like he's slotting into like the old Alex Grinch defenses where the defense as a whole is going to be bad. <laughs> The position he's on is bad, and they can improve that and turn that defense into a just a totally different level. So I think there's mm-hmm. a, definitely a pitch there, um, and I, I I don't know I I feel like I feel like that's definitely um, he's a guy you got to lock down, especially yeah. if it is between OU and Texas. You do not want to see that guy on the other side of the Cotton Bowl. Yeah, if you miss out on him, I mean, like, I still think that Oklahoma would be very, very happy with the Jermaine Lowell from Louisville. He's He's yeah. got great tools, great size, 300-pound-plus kind of guy um, that you're kind of looking for that you should just don't come around often. So we've got options right now, which you should be very thankful right now at this point, April 17th, that you have options to kind of fill some holes in your roster. Um, you brought up linebacker, Bobby, as a trans- transition I think linebacker is by far the most boring position coming into this spring game to watch because you already kind of know what you've got there in terms of the top four. I can tell you right now, and I've already seen plenty of them. You know, you you think of Danny Stutzman, you think of Jaron Kanick, um, you think of Kobe McKenzie, and then you think of Kip Lewis. Like, you already know that. Really, like, if you look down on the depth chart, like, I want to see more Lewis Carter because we hear all these things great about Lewis Carter, but you know, that's three deep. That's three deep. So like it can a guy like Lewis Carter get much on the field for this OU team come the fall. I really hope so. But in actuality, if he doesn't, that's kind of a good thing too, because that means we have such a solid two deep linebacking core that, Oh, well, sometimes there's going to be guys that are going to be left to the wayside. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's an unbelievably deep unit. It's uh, Shane Whittier, I believe. Um, I, 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 I'm not tripping. He was a, he was a linebacker, right? Transfer he barely port, played. Yeah, he hit the portal for a reason because he wasn't going to get see anything remotely close to the field. Um, that's that's the thing. This is one of the deepest units in the uh, linebacking units of the country by far. Uh, it's going to be highly competitive. Kip Lewis and Jaron Kanek are going to be going at each other's throats the whole time to get that starting role. There'll be a lot of rotation, you'd imagine, um, you know, keeping guys fresh. It's just going to be, I mean, it's so deep. So like a Lewis Carter, if he, you know, if he gets a burn with him, I mean, that, that'd be pretty cool. 
Yeah, it'd be cool. But, you know, I mean, I, I guess in this game, like, how much are we really expecting Danny Stutzman to play? And, like, guys like Billy Bowman and Danny Stutzman. Are they going to play much, if even, even at all? Maybe, like, a couple of snaps? Surely not. Surely not. Yeah, this is this is a spring game. This is a spring game, like, type of player we have in Lewis Carter. Because that's, you know, Stutzman, you've seen all you really can. And I feel like in a pre-NIL era, like Stutzman would be way gone by now. But you can make a lot of money here. Um, I, I think the same with Bowen. I, I don't see a ton of – or not Bowen, but Bowman. Um, I don't see a ton of play, burn for them. At this point, it's just kind of calisthenics for them. You know, I don't think there's much more you can learn about either of those players. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. So in terms of the linebacking core – I'm not too excited. You know, then also like kind of in the secondary too. I mean, I can, I can kind of scrap away, you know, some of the young guys, like I've, I think I've read a lot of stuff about like Reggie powers and people really like the way that he's played, you know, Peyton Bowen, his end of the year last year, he wasn't fully healthy. You know, could we see him be a little bit more healthy and make more athletic plays in the spring game? Absolutely. Can I see him aggressively trying to cut off routes like he was at the beginning of the season? That's what I'd want to see. I want to see turnovers. I guess like the guys that I'm really excited about, I guess Des Malone, that's just one of those, hey, I've heard good things or read good things about it. I got to stop saying heard because I didn't hear shit. You know, it's all I've been reading. Um, Des Malone. And then, um, you know, I guess a guy that I've liked since the beginning, but we haven't seen as much, Josiah Wagner. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've heard a, I've heard a good amount of, uh, well, read a good amount of Wagner. It's, it's gonna be interesting, I think, overall. Um, I, I don't know. I'm sorry, I, I, bl- I just t- completely blanked out there for a moment reading the comments. Um, I, I do on on Wagner. Um, I do have a, a point of worry. Uh, something that that kind of jumped out to me. Um, he's from Washington, which is a ball oh. not knower state. So, uh, questionable. Right, right. We see it on a right. We have a linebacker from Indiana. He is very good, though. He's the exception. So, you know, it's just because you're from a ball not knower state does not mean that you don't know ball. Like Dasan McCullough knows ball, even though he's from Indiana. Uh, but we we do need to be cautious if we're going to hype up mm-hmm. someone from Washington because who was from Washington? I don't think they're from Washington, but they ended up going there. Buki. So, yeah. Uh, Bobby doesn't want to relive those memories, but we continue to tell those stories. Um, that, that's I, hey, really look, it. I started. I started out this entire podcast with the worst take possible, so it all it all went upwards from there. Uh, yeah, it, all of my takes have gone upwards from uh, Buki being in your like, defense. Yeah, he was a five star with a lot of hype. It should have been alarming that we were the best place he could go. That should have been a kind of a red flag. It was us versus Nebraska. <laughs> yeah. let, it, let, it not, let it be known. It was us versus Nebraska. Uh, I think goodness. we stole him from Nebraska. Even. Yeah, we it did. Was like, it was yeah. it was an Under Armour All-American game last minute kind of thing. We didn't think we were yeah. going to get him. It was a big deal. Yeah, that, that was fun. Um, yeah, but I, I, I think that the defense is – they're going to have some plays. Defensive line will be the most exciting group to watch, especially in the defensive ends. We didn't talk about that. Can PJ go make a sack? Things like that. You know, his long arms will probably just brush Jackson Arnold, and they're not going to call the play, the play dead just because that's just how they do it. Um, hey, you know, guys like uh, also in the, in the defensive end group, um, our Mason Thomas is perfect about getting in the backfield and actually causing havoc, but never getting a sack. So maybe you'll actually be really good in the spring game. So I, it, grand scheme of things, this, this defense is so good and us kind of like trying to find nitpicky things to talk about for excitement, like deeper in the roster and being difficult is should be a positive for what we should see in the fall. Um, but should be the winning team come the red and white game on Saturday. Although Jameson, if you think about it, you know, we t- we talk about guys like Stutzman, you know, and Billy Bowman not playing a lot. What if that means like they'll they'll play, they'll get the burn early, and then the red team like comes back, you know, it, it opens you up to comeback possibilities. You think just, Brendan Zerberg is going to be doing a comeback at the end of the game? <laughs> you never know, Jameson. I'm just saying, you know, especially with the Elam ending, you know, we could be sitting there waiting all day for it to 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 wrap up. 
we should have done this like a normal game preview, like made up of made up or found a line somewhere and broke it down. Yeah. What What do you think? If I gave you a line right now, and this is going to be so hard because of the I can't tell you straight of these stupid scoring. And don't get me started about the the stupid scoreboard guy who is boosting the points for the other team. He's just going rogue. Yeah. If I gave you minus five and a half for the defense, what would you take? I still take. Um, I mean, I, I'll probably I'd probably take the defense still. I just mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. they're that they're that much on a different level, and they win that much more in the trenches on you know from top to bottom. That I think that's kind of the difference by far. So, mm-hmm. all right, first pick, Bobby's on minus five and a half on the defense. Ty, what do you got? I'm gonna take. Right, so what's the rule on on the scoreboard guy manipulating? No, scores? this is this, is, that's part no, of it. That's, that's part of the, game. the final score, like what the scoreboard says. We're not what the scoreboard whole... says, the final, yeah, the no, final score the, at the, the very offense. end of the game. Yeah, give me the offense. Yeah, give me plus five. Yeah, because this, I feel like that scoreboard guy is gonna tw- like do some things and make it mm-hmm. weird at the end. He's not well, gonna count I, for, some PBs for the record. Jameson, are you on plus five as well? I'm gonna take plus five because that scoreboard guy, I just don't trust. Yeah, for the record, this is. If Jameson and I cover here, or if Jameson and I don't cover here, aha, funny joke, we forget about it. Um, if Bobby doesn't cover here, this counts towards his record next season. So he starts with minus. He starts with one loss. Oh, God. <laughs> God. That, I'm kidding. That would be pretty funny. Losing the weekend spread, finishing last, having to deal with the punishment it's because of the spring game. <laughs> When, when you clearly won, but the scoreboard guy manipulated it. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't jump the, he didn't, he didn't, Bobby's he didn't doing the pass blocks. An intense, like, slow watch, like, on half speed. He's like, he tipped it. He tipped it. He tipped You're it. Still out. it. <laughs> yeah, no, just going, like, full, like, Zapruder film on the, on the 20, 24 OU spring game. Look back into the left. Back into the left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one last thing to round out our spring game combos um moving into saturday um ty give us mm-hmm. your thoughts on the kicking battle zach schmidt comes out there he's going to be kicking in the rain he's got a history of bad kicks in the rain we've seen mm-hmm. if he misses that first kick what's gonna happen hang on i'm consulting the sacred knowledge um, also known as just what state everyone is from. So, mm, are you like Tyler the, Keltner is, of, from, is from Florida and of Zach the list Schmidt of kickers, is from Oklahoma. Yes. Zach Schmidt is in fact from Oklahoma, which I would argue Florida, maybe slightly more of a ball knower state. Uh, they have a big size advantage in terms of population. Zach Schmidt does in fact have a weight advantage, but he did go to Bishop McGinnis, which is a ball not knower school. <laughs> within a larger ball nowhere state of Oklahoma. So if you were from like not Bishop McGinnis, I would have more faith in him. Also, if I had never seen him before, I would have more faith in him. But I am all on board with the FSU uh, transfer guy. He saw what they did out there at Florida State and, and the way they whined. And he said, I will have no part of this. Take me somewhere where they uh, they take what's handed to them by the committee and they don't whine about it. So. Question, quick that. question on place. Keltner. So he, so he is a redshirt senior, and I'll have to do the math on this one. Um, was he a part of all of the turntoll stuff that happened with um, Ricky Aguayo? Oh, that had that had to have been years ago, right? Like, <laughs> turntoll. When was turntoll? <laughs> I don't know. So he's been there for what? Like he did he start at Florida State? Is the first question because he's had five years, four years there. He's four years, Turtle right? It feels like it was like eight years ago. I don't know what time it is anymore. Five, okay, it was five years ago. So this is, uh, no, 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 this no, is no that's incorrect. Six, six years ago. Okay, so, he's clear. He's clear yeah. from Turnbull, so he's not cursed. He he is free from the from from the Turnbull drama and all. Please of that. please educate people on is what Turnbull is if they don't know. Okay, so Turnbull Turnbull was the uh, innocent little turtle of. Um, some fraternity i can't remember at florida states it, it was their pet turtle like the fraternity turtle uh and for some reason florida state and uh ricky aguayo uh 
were just like hanging out in the in the in the, in the fraternity house, and then they they ripped the turtle in half. They ripped turtle in half, <laughs> which just truly devastating. That they just like who first of all who does that to a you know um, a, a living creature, um, and second, how do you do it to a turtle named Turtle, which is quite okay. possibly the greatest fraternity pet name of all time. Mm -hmm. he, he did he it was apparently a revenge killing he was he was jumped <laughs> by that fraternity for missing field goals <laughs> Which, that is the funny part of the story it is it is genuinely terrible what happened to what happened to the turtle but that's just our thoughts and prayers are with you, a, oh, but it actually such, is pretty funny it's such a florida state story it's such a florida story really apparently florida man apparently Apparently, no one was charged in the turtle killing because uh, nobody had seen who tur who killed the turtle. It was all <laughs> they just found the turtle, which you know, my favorite thing about there's nothing I like about this, but if there was something that <laughs> mildly thing. amused me about it, is the fact that Ricky Guayo might have not known that the turtle was connected to the shell and was probably just trying to have it pop out and see what see what probably thought he was oh, actually wearing the shell yeah. and was it like built into him maybe I, I don't know so is is keltner he is safe he is safe from the great turtle pivot curse. He, yeah he is, he is he is untarnished unsullied by the turtle curse as okay, far as i, so can I feel good about him winning the job this year although you never know with the COVID years but still he's he's definitely, no uh that he's was the, the turtle thing was though. 2017 no he didn't show up till 19 oh blessed be there you go I don't know that room. Some bad, you know. Surely it's just some bad vibes about <laughs> the, the bad turtle vibes. Uh, anyways, let's move on from turtle. I apologize. No, this is what I want. Oh my god. Uh, anyways, <laughs> carry on. We just wrote uh, something in our private chat that we will not be communicating on this podcast. Yeah, turtle deserve better parents. Um. This is, in fact, I, I'm now blaming the fraternity for Turtle. They they didn't look after him enough. You got to you got to secure Turtle. Uh, anyways, anyways, this, anyways. This anyways. started about. Or, do we have a kicker battle? I um, no. I remember this. I I was going to make I was going to make a riff on Zach Schmidt, and I realize now why he was bad is because you can't have a, a Oklahoma City area private school like kicker. It's mm -hmm. it, amen. It, sure. Or look, wide receiver. Well, that. Yeah, because uh, no, or, no okay, Sterling, no. Sterling Shepard. Yeah, not good. Yuck. Walk Whoa. back, walk back. Or wide receiver Whoa. named Gavin Freeman. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, anyways. He's looking at him smirk, um, Bobby. He's just smirking. Well, I had to think, because immediately, <laughs> as soon as I said that, I was like, oh, no, Shep. And then I was like, okay, easy follow-on joke off the hip. Oh, no, Wes Welker. Okay, <laughs> let me come up. Shoot. I got I to gotta think through this here for a second. Um, but uh, but no. Um, in terms of kickers, you know, you got the uh, not Honeycutt, uh, Zach, uh, Jimmy Stevens, <laughs> Jimmy Stevens, not a good kicker, bad situation there. Uh, you know, and then Schmidt, you know, not very good. Yeah, no offense, we, to Jimmy we, Stevens, but I I would never want to cheer against anyone on this football team. But if Schmidt goes out there and plays so bad in the spring game and does that before he can do it in the beginning of the regular season, I think this is a Band-Aid that could be ripped off earlier rather than later. So I'm not cheering for missed field goals in the spring game. On record. Off record, low-key kind of am. But what, if we, what if we just became one of those always go for two schools? Down. Down. Totally down for that. That would be fun. And that sounds fun. I'm down. Let's, let's do it. I, I, like, I, I love a little bit of spice. You know, could be could be neat. Yeah, that's very Lane Kiffin esque. I feel like they they do it a lot, and I feel like LSU did it a lot last year too. Um, but I'm totally that's down. it. Actually, I got a good QB run package. He's that it. You get Is that, that you stat pad for your quarterback to be the most mediocre player to win the Heisman in history. That was and have just absolute stellar wide receiver core. Jaden Daniels, he's going to flop in the NFL, but don't get me started on NFL. It's draft talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. No, you did you this to yourself with Drake May. <laughs> Drake May's going to be good. He's going to be good. In what? Jaden Daniels, quarterback of the Washington Commanders. 
It's going to be tough tough Ooh. over here at the DMV. Mm. <laughs> I keep saying DMV because I know it just gets under ties. It doesn't. I don't know why you think that gets under my skin. Huh? Well, I keep on saying it then. Yeah. There you go. Uh, are we missing that's, anything? That's what the area is called. I don't know why you think I have. To be completely so, honest, Bobby, there's there are actual recruits coming in to this game. Yeah, of course. And um, how much do I have on it? None, because I've spent all of my time looking into transfer portal people, just to be completely candid with you. Um, I think I, I'm pretty sure the guy that if you, every time you have a spring game, you're really excited, um, like who could have a commitment. I think the one that people have been talking the most about is Cortland Guillory, I believe. So Cortland Guillory, um, he's a guy that's been interested in OU for a while now. Um, I think that there's some talk between him, him and Texas. I'm pretty sure this is the guy I've seen the most about. Um, but this is should be our war to win. Um, but he's he's a pretty good um, option in terms of like looking for guys that could make big moves over this uh, spring game. Um, for people who don't know, Court and Guillory's three star by some services, four star on others. Um, cornerback, six foot one out of Houston, Texas. Um, a lot of people on recruiting sites have him think that he's going to go to Texas, but I think that he could be um, a big move for OU. So I'm excited to see what we can get from him. Yeah, that'd be good. I think he's coming to the spring game. I don't know. I'm I, now I'm starting to doubt myself. I'm pretty sure he's going to spring spring game. It's from, Please, yeah, from take spring. take me out in the comments if I'm wrong. But I'm I'm pretty sure I, this is the people I, I I've been hearing about and I've been reading the comments. In all my message boards, people talking about. Yeah, I frankly don't know enough. I uh, um, to, to be honest with you, Bobby, my recruiting this year is lacking. It's lacking. <laughs> it's hard. It's so much harder. It was so much easier back in the day, you know, um, because you had so much like people could commit and decommit at the drop of a hat. Now it's like you got to hold out to the very end with this Brent Venables. I don't want to be your side chick kind of thing. I want to be your main chick at all times, and you got to be monogamous with me. Um, like it's, it makes things a lot harder because, um, people are going to slow, slow play and you really don't know who your true targets are until like things start to settle out and come into form near the end of the year. So you know, I, I know, I know names here, you know, like sellers is another big name that people are talking about at cornerback room. And obviously, um, with Malik Hawkins going in, it kind of squeezes in terms of who's going to, who's going to be taken there. The guy from Carl Albert also is. I think getting a lot of predictions to go to Notre Dame. So it's kind of further squeezing this cornerback target room. There you go. And, and yeah, I, I could see that like being a bit of a bummer. Cause you went from, you know, dopamine heavy Lincoln Riley, giving you plenty of breadcrumbs at all times, eyeballs, decommits, commits, wild, just wild recruiting cycles to now Brent Venables who keeps it pretty chill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll, we'll continue to watch it, but I, if you're looking for big recruiting, look at the transfer portal. That's the guys that we talked about during this podcast, and that's the one that you should be getting excited for um, for any kind of commitments after this game. Yeah, for sure. For sure should be interesting stuff. Um, do we have any other – I'm trying to think if there's anything we have missed recently. Um, no other real big OU news or anything. Um I, apparently there there should be some big SEC stuff coming out around the time that uh, OU officially goes to the SEC. We'll get on that whenever it uh, appears. But yeah, I don't know. This is the, until we're, we're going to have the spring game and then recap the spring game and then long period. We're going to rank buildings on campus is what we're going to do. We are, and I am very excited for that podcast. Have we, even, have we talked about this publicly we, on our show yet? We talked about it last week. Okay, I I couldn't remember. Didn't we tell? So. Didn't we say that on the record? We did. Yeah, it was it was kind of deep in. I, I don't know if anyone <laughs> listened to, to that point, but I think we had. I don't know. I feel like we had teased it another time at least. But uh, yeah, if it was off the pot, off that the one's gonna, it's going to be heated. It's going to be very <laughs> heated. I'm Don't telling you right podcast. now. We've never had a so more good. heated one. It's going to be. It's going to be biblical. I have one specific building that I know we're going to fight about. Like I, I, I absolutely know I have a take on it. It's going to get, it's going to be a whole thing and I'm excited mm -hmm. about that. But that's one of those, like for okay. people who went to you, like it's going to be a legendary all time. Bobby, moment. is it the stadium? 
No. What? <laughs> I feel like you can't even rank the stadium. Like that should be like off. Li- although, it, although I don't know, it could be there. No, I, we're gonna pull up the official campus map, and we're just gonna go up and down. It's gonna be a six, seven hour pod. Are we gonna? We should There's put a some on there that I can't. What is we're, not, we're not. We're not tier listing. Or something we're not like tier that. listing. Like we're ranking. No, I feel like one uh, through yeah, two hundred so, or something. So difficult. Yeah, I know y'all kept roasting me for tier makers like last no, week. No, no, we, we, we have to tier maker. We have to maker. It's a great format. It's a great <laughs> format, and I stand by that. That's fine. We could tier maker it, but yeah. that'll be coming. That'll be coming in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Got to get that we're before people. Sunday. Uh, I think we should talk about the spring game, and then I think the next week after that we should talk about it. Look, I didn't yeah. look. I wasn't the one that said Sunday the twenty first, right? So I don't know why you're getting all snappy at me. I did not say Sunday uh, the twenty first. Right. I, I absolutely know. did I not say. I don't Sunday. know. I'm gonna pull let's, let's, let's just let's just call it May first for the time being. Right before yeah. graduation, people can get a little bit of thoughts on um, if they're if you're leaving OU or you know you're thinking about people that are about to come to OU in the next year. I yeah, it's a great time. Yeah, it'll be a good time. De- definitely not Sunday. That's the Thunder's uh, playoff opener, so that, that is a no go. But we'll we'll figure out a day to solidify that. So, um, anyways, yeah. So um, next week we'll be recapping that, and then uh, after that, as we creep forward, we'll uh, do the building rankings. So uh, stay tuned for that, um, guys. Any final words before you sign on off? <coughs> um, nope. But- I didn't mean to cough. The really cough kind of comedically timed cough, you know. Um, yeah, no, that's okay. Well, that's it then. Oh, I've got um, an Instagram. I got to send y'all because that cough. Sign us out, Bobby. Yep. Uh, for me, Jameson and Ty, uh, this has been the Schooner Pod. We'll see y'all next week to talk about the spring game. Uh, until then, have a good one, everyone. And boomer sooner. <laughs>